Hey, we are The Killing Moon and you're watching InsidePunk.com. Inside Punk, and we're here with the Killing Moon in Altoona, Pennsylvania. And can you guys just give us your names and what you do in the band? My name is Chris Michaud. I play the saxophone, and I also do some vocals. I'm Trevor Gagan, and I play bass guitar. I'm Dan, and I play trombone. Jeremy Yaley, and I play drums. I'm Ryan Hannon, and I play guitar and sing. Right, so you guys can be described as an aggressive rock band with horns, right? Yeah, that's what we like to yeah. say. You try to stay away from the ska. People yeah, say. we hate that description. We don't, we, don't, we don't hate ska bands or anything like that. It's just that we try to, to are trying to make something a little different. And I think ska doesn't completely like represent us that well. So. A little heavier, a little yeah. more rock and roll to it. Yeah. You guys ever had like any trouble at shows with the horns? Like, I remember. Oh yeah, that's right. When we first started touring, like we were, like we played a lot of. For some reason, we were on a lot of like hardcore and metal shows. We get up there on stage, and immediately they see two horns. And at the time, uh, we were called Animal Suit Drive By, which is another question you're gonna ask. Right. However, um, <laughs> they would hear, see the horns, hear that name, and kids just walk out, yell shit at us, you know, like fucking get off the stage, assholes, like all that. Even start playing, yeah. and before we even started playing, so. Yeah, but not so much anymore because we're, we're doing better now. We've toured a lot. I think people have perhaps heard more about us. But and also, really in, but the dreaded two words for us are play beer. Yeah, my like, real big picture was like play beer. <laughs> like, 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 the, like, like the free bird thing. <laughs> Yeah. Other when you have I wish some beer by Real Big Fish is your free bird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, love Real Big Fish though. Great band. So you guys released an EP, a message to your team. Yeah. All right. How's that sound? Real pretty good. good. Yeah. They got real well actually. <laughs> March seventh it came out, and uh, I mean, it's uh, a little bit above par. I guess it's, it's doing better than even than I think the label expected. And I think with an EP. It's not just like our expectations are important, you know, we really want to make sure we keep our label happy. As long as we know that we're doing well and they're happy with our progression, then we're happy. So. You guys are trying to do it? Yeah, we're on Fearless. Yeah. Yeah. And that was released on Fearless, your EP? Yeah. yeah. It was the, uh, actually a similar, uh, the EP was actually originally recorded as Animal Suit Drive by as our old band name, and then Fearless sad. released it. What? It was very similar. Oh my yeah. In fact, it was the exact same thing. But uh, yeah, we did we did pretty good sales in Maine, and I guess that's kind of how Fearless heard of us through the internet and whatnot. And then when they were interested in us, we didn't know if they wanted us to re-record something or put something out new. But they deemed the EP nationally sellable, and uh, so they just they just picked it up and put it back out just as is. So. Also known as NS. Yeah, NS nationally sellable. I coined that term right here. <laughs> how long have you guys been signed to Fearless? Since December? December? Yeah, it's yeah. December, January area. It didn't take you long. No, no. Well, I mean, just had to do our work. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you guys will be on Warp Tour August 2nd? Yeah, first and second. August yeah, first and second. We'll play in the New York and the Massachusetts States. Yeah. That's my book. I play you saw struggling with our, um, our tent there. Oh, really? Because we were like, oh man, we only have like another day until we gotta get this done, so. We had a little bit of extra time. Up? What? Where'd you guys pick up the tent? It's pretty sweet. Oh, uh, we actually, our friend, yeah, one, one of our, one of our, Tour like merch guys, tour manager guys, uh, brought it brought it with him because we left yeah. it at home. So that's so, yeah. Is that me? Yeah, that was you. Yeah. Hey, that guy. Out. <laughs> <laughs> He's kicking him out of the circle. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so you guys played Bamboozle this year? Yeah, yeah. that was so awesome. sick. Awesome. It was so fun. We did, we did one day at the Warp Pro last year, and I, I'm sure a lot of people on the outside think, oh, it's all the same thing. It really is. Warp Pro's awesome. And, um, but the difference is there's there's, there's so many dates of, of the Warp Pro that it's just not as uh, prestigious, I guess. And it's not, there's, not as, there's so many more bands on Warp Pro than there are on Bamboozle. There's a lot more of like, a totally different experience for us to play. On a stage that was like three times the size of the stage we'd be playing on Warp Tour. 
we really, we really lucked out uh, with that too because uh, we we played first on the Macbeth stage in Bamboozle. It's one of like the it's not the main stage obviously, but it's huge. Like, it was the biggest stage I've ever played in my entire life. And for some reason, it just worked out how a ton of kids went to see the AKAs and they were just they just kind of migrated over. We were playing for like 2,500 kids. It was so yeah, we yeah. killed and merged. Was, yeah, great reaction. I wore a cardboard box and walked around the line before we played, then wrote. What time we were playing was like a robot. And I think it helped a lot because know, lots of kids know. wanted to take pictures with me. So I, th I think I think I did a good job. It's officially the funniest we've ever been because we're not yeah. a funny band. I'm not funny. I'm not funny. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. Jeremy's really he's, he's a I'm dummy. Good. He's a I'm really not funny. Bonehead. But that day that day I was funny. Yeah. But yeah, so that was great for I mean just for right there we actually got a draw in New Jersey. So fantastic. Awesome, yeah. Yeah. We got to see Pete Wentz. So we saw Pete Wentz and Panic of Disco sitting at the same table of catering. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are on the punk days, man. Right? Yeah. And you guys fans of Atlantis More Sad? Or? Well, to be honest with you, like... all of us own this. All of us yeah. own this CD. In the 90s, none of us were like... I guess a lot of us are probably like listening to all this cred music in the 90s. We were just straight up radio pop, Ace of Bass, we kind of TLC, yeah. stuff like that. Because yeah. we're not that old right now, so we were just radio kids. And that was one of the songs we all had the CD, all remembered. And That's how it Thought it was kind of hilarious because Atlantis were said with Ryan singing vocals yeah. <laughs> with our style. I don't know. It's cool. So the horns and everything come together like that. Uh, in the cover or yeah. in general? Just in the cover. In the cover, we just, uh, like, the day, we were supposed to be writing it for a long time, but we ended up just the day before we went to our friend's practice space and just kind of fooled around and. I don't know, nothing, nothing too intense. It was pretty much the regular writing process that we always do. The thing is, we actually had tried to, um, we had sat in, my, in, my, uh, in our practice space at home, and we were like, oh my god, this is like, we could almost consider like not doing it. We are like, this is like seriously like not possible. We didn't want it to sound exactly like the actual song, you know? Too many bands, and, and I'm not saying bands on that city specifically, but too many bands just literally get, it seems like, get, get the tablet, like the guitar tabs, and throw some distortion on to make it sound new, and we didn't want to just do that, especially because our whole thing, the message from our band is really trying to make something new and different, you know? And um, so we sat there and we were like, oh my god, this isn't going to happen. And we just luckily clicked the day before we went in the studio, we, as we said, we went to a practice space and things just seemed to work out. All of a sudden we were like, oh, let's do this. <laughs> yeah. Back to the animal suit drive by. How come you guys switched the name? Well, picture a bunch of sophomores in high school starting a band as a joke in which they can sing about high school cake parties and being rejected by hot girls because they were ugly. <laughs> and being called animal suit drive by just by picking a bunch of random words. Yeah, let's be honest. Like, I think all you have to do, my remedy is just say it. Just say it. Animal suit, it's like the worst thing you could ever say. Yeah. yeah. I think it should be a for some reason, For some reason, people were, some people were mad about it and we changed our name. And uh, none of us really understand why. Everyone said it was unique and fit us well. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't think so. And yeah, also, kids want to have a reason to like be mad. To be mad or to not like you know. And like, I think one, it's one thing you know for us to go on stage and be trying to change the whole ska thing, and we walk on stage with horns, and then I have to go up and be like, hey, we're, we're Animal Suit Drive By. It's kind of silly sounding, and like we kind of wanted a name that really didn't really say much about us. We just want to be taken seriously. <laughs> oh my god. No joke. <laughs> no. I don't know, we were just sick of it. We'd had the name for a long time. We were going to be on, going out to the national stage and. It was like now or never. Now or never, so we did it. It was kind of the finishing of the transition of our band. Because we started out as a stupid, like. Joke for fun. Joke, band. dumb stuff, and now we're kind of trying to do a serious thing. Even though we're still stupid. Yeah. 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 
So when will your next release be out? Like, you plan on a full length or anything? Probably. March or April. March or April of next year. See, like, our EP came out March 7th. And we really want to push it much more than a year, you know, in between releases. Actually, so, you know, right now, this is the end of our tour. We've been touring more or less straight since February. And uh, we're going to go home for a few months now and write the album. And like, Fearless wanted it to be done, if possible, by December. So they can have time to push it. And then, like Ryan said, have it be out by March. So look for it. So you don't have a producer or anything lined up, nothing like that? That's no idea. I'm not going to say anything because nothing's 100% in stone yet. So. Uh, it says to ask about the music video that you supposedly did for Subject A that never yeah. surfaced. We'll we ask, don't even know. We'll ask. Oh, okay. Actually, I talked about it the other day. At the, I called the label and I was talking about it. It's just that um, once we got like it all, we, we just went to a, a big club in LA called um, Chain Reaction. And we were like, it's actually in Anaheim, but it's in, in California. And um, we just pretty much shot a live video. You know, we, we played the song to the album like 500 times, and they took they took different takes. And once the actual editing and the effects were done, we're so far past CP right now that it's kind of like not worth even really releasing. You know what I mean? Because we're just about to stop touring and writing our full length. Maybe if we had done it in time, so that it was like a month after our EP came out. Could be more sensible to put on a video, but right now it's like it's and, and it probably, we probably didn't look very cool in it. Yeah, yeah. So. we all change our looks so much. We don't <laughs> look cool usually. I know right now we do, but normally, <laughs> normally we're not. We're not we like crimped for this. We, we didn't have time to crimp for the cameras, right? Yeah, yeah. The cameras are cool. <laughs> Um, were you guys ever consider playing the song while the music was loud live again? Uh, you did stop had, asking for it. We had a retirement. We had we had one show where like this is the last time. Yeah, it was this really like small Indian. town in Maine that we built our first like big fan base. Kind of and people have been bugging us. us for so long. We're like we showed up like we didn't tell anybody we were gonna play. We just kind of showed up and we're like, all right, whoever's here, you're lucky enough. We're playing it now and we're never playing it again. So. And then of course the next show we played. Kids were like, oh, you played it, played again. Yeah. Like, no. <laughs> no. If you think no. of that song, like I know people like it, but like how, uh, I can only reiterate so many times that we're trying to, uh, to you know, to put this certain sort of uh, persona or image of our band out that you know, like what our style, what we're trying to do musically. And I think to be playing songs that were of our old style is only gonna detrimental. You know, it's only detrimental. Yeah. Detrimental. How's your relationship with ex-manager Chris Carl? He's That's the man. Great. We love Chris Carl. He's still one of our good friends. Have you seen that guy lately? Incredible, man. He looks so good. Yeah, he's fucking jacked. I did. Jack. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, uh, he's awesome. You would want to have sex with him. He's awesome. <laughs> I didn't have sex with him. I kissed him. Oh, on. <laughs> no, but on a serious note, we just said... Uh, it was never that harsh. I mean, it was pretty much a... We waited, you know, our contract ran out, and we, I think we were both kind of like, he was in a position to change his lifestyle a little bit, and we were not in the position to be uh, really having a manager. We don't, we don't, we don't really in the need for one at the, at the time, and especially when we had to renew it, we were like, not right now, so. He was going back to school and doing yeah. stuff, so everything's cool. What's your favorite band like that you've toured with? Showbread. Showbread. Showbread, yeah. Showbread, I'd say, probably Showbread. Not, and we also really like Sullivan. We thought Sullivan was really cool dudes and uh, we like them. But as far as like watching a show, like watching a live show every night, you have to watch one band and also get along with them. Showbread's pretty cool. Yeah. Plus, there's so many of them. Yeah. Yeah, you have to like one of them. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's entertaining to watch just because of the fact that there's seven dudes on stage. Go and crazy. they have a guitar player. Yeah. Do you guys have any crazy stories from the road you like to share with us? Firework story, go. Yep. Yeah, there's this thing, these green eyes from Connecticut, and they're awesome. And we were traveling to Washington to play a show. And we happened, you know, you never, like, it's funny, like, when you're on tour, you rarely ever actually travel with bands. Like, you stay with them sometimes when people leave at different times. And we were on the highway, like, oh my god, there's these green eyes, they're like a few hundred feet ahead of us. So we had fireworks we bought in uh, South Carolina. And I was like, guys, I'll get in the passenger side seat. And we'll fly by them and I'll shoot the fireworks at their van and trailer. No, it was I was sitting shotgun. You're like, let's shoot a Roman candle at them. And I was like, no, that's stupid. <laughs> and then I hear you next to me like, dude, open the window. And I look over and he's lighting, he's lighting the thing. Roll down the window. This is a little more. Okay. Go. And um, it's really fun. It was like insane. They're just bouncing off the van at like 80 miles an hour. And um, then they threw some urine, and uh, that was all over our van. And we didn't notice this lady that hated the entire situation in another car, and she called the cops. 
We couldn't really deny it because our van was full of like gunpowder and smoke and like there was fireworks everywhere. But the charges were discharge of flaming debris from a motor vehicle. First off, fireworks are illegal in Washington. It was uh, uh, forest fire watch and reckless endangerment. Yeah, it took so, so long but because I, the cops are just on the radio and they're like, what are we even they doing right now? We don't the know. They had a call. Yeah, it was so ridiculous. Man. But because we told the truth, which is the moral of the story, tell the truth, kids. Um, we ended up with no jail time, and I just had a thousand and twenty-five dollar fine. That's it. And my sister paid. Thank you, Megan. <laughs> <laughs> so it yeah, I have to pay her back eventually, but as you can tell with our U-Haul trailer, we have no money. <laughs> I love Eddie. Eddie money. We got Eddie. We got Eddie, Eddie, Eddie money too. Eddie money in the van a lot. That's um, him right there. You see him? Keys. Said, he's got a rat tail. He I have a rat tail. Don't call me. Oh, this is yeah. Eddie, our tour manager. He has IBS, and it's shit. I think what we, really, what we want is for you to come and see us and we'll rock really hard for you because we love you, even though we don't know you. Although I guess we know some of you because you ask all these really personal questions. But yes, we want to play for you. So come see us. And kiss you. Uh, MySpace.com slash TheKillingMoonRock. TheKillingMoon.com and PureVolume.com slash TheKillingMoon. All our great sites. Top 10 on the web pretty much. So here's a job. Is that an XL1? What is it? It's a Sony. Yeah, it's a... <laughs> <laughs> not, that I'm, not that I'm looking down on you. Out of here. Giggity, giggity, goop! Alright. Alright! He just really wants to spot it.